All right, what's going on family? I'm here editing my video that you're about to watch. And for some reason, I guess my camera settings got messed with. I'm using a little vlog camera that I don't use that often, but the ISO was set super high and just some of the settings were off, right? I started recording this morning, went the whole day without realizing there was anything wrong until I sat down here to edit. And the footage is kind of grainy kind of really grainy, so I do apologize for that. The content's there. Um, you know, I edit it just like I normally would, my commentaries, everything, but it's just not super sharp. It's not clear. It's not as clear as normal. So I do apologize. The problem's already fixed, and it, it won't happen again. So thank you guys for your support. Thank you for understanding. Sit back, relax, enjoy this video. And give it a thumbs up if you do like it, or a thumbs down if you don't. All right, thanks. <laughs> Sunday morning, I weighed in 179.8. About to head to the gym very soon. I'm gonna have a meal first. You already know. Guys, give this video a thumbs up if Faith looks like Sholly. <laughs> Faith. <laughs> Before we get into this vlog, I wanna show you guys uh, one of my recent pickups. This guitar means a ton to me. This is a, 19, a 1964 Heavy Relic Stratocaster and Fiesta Red. Let me open this so you can get more light. Mint green pit guard. Had an original sunburst color, as you can see. From the custom shop. As you can see right here. You can see the neck. This guitar is an absolute beauty. The absolute beauty. Growing up, my Absolute number one guitar inspiration was John Mayer. I like Hendrix, John Mayer, Steve Ray Vaughan, um, Eric Clapton, and one common denominator is all of the primary guitars are Fender Stratocasters. And so, primary, or really a 60s Fender Stratocaster. So, um, I'm so happy that I'm in a position now where I can like be able to. Ah, so nice. Love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, I've got, so I've got the Custom 24 and the 64 Strat. I'm playing through a Supro amp right here. And that's my little setup. Uh, yesterday I think I played for like three hours, and the day before that, I got the, I got the guitar two days ago. I played like two and a half hours. And so, um, once I pick it up, I literally just forget about everything. I forget about my phone, I forget about this and that. And it's nice to just like, have something that I can get away, so I love it. And I'm gonna continue practicing, getting better and better and better. <laughs> left the house, drove all the way to the gym. I have my camera, I even have my A7S. Got my pre-workout, got some ghosts in here and everything. Left my memory card in the computer because I was uploading a video to Instagram of the guitar playing and drove all the way back here, got the memory card. Now we are headed to the gym. Let's go. Bran is about to help me write a workout for the day. For yeah. I hit back the other day and I only did back. I didn't do back and by. So today should be my push day. But because I didn't do biceps, I want to do biceps today. So I'm doing chest, some shoulders, some biceps and tricep. I'm having Brandon write it out for me on this little board. Let's do, let's start with bench because that's yeah. your staple. Right, so right now this, this canvas is empty. I'll show you guys the final product. Here we are. This is it. I'm about to do a commentary and actually walk you through everything I do. Let's get started. Oh yeah. Back in the gym. Back in the gym. Back in the gym. With CG. <laughs> What's going on guys? Back with another commentary. Shout out to the Hodge Twins. Keith and Kevin, I miss you guys. Uh, they are some of the coolest dudes around. I, I kid you not, I've met a lot of people in this little fitness industry, I guess you can call it. And they are so hilarious, so awesome. And I hope they're 
doing well. I hope they're killing. I know they're building a gym, so I hope they're doing awesome. But I'm going to take you guys through this workout step by step. It was a chest, a little bit of shoulder, bicep, and tricep day, which is kind of weird. You know, kind of thrown off. But uh, my last workout was a back day. I didn't hit by, so I want to throw a bicep into my push workout. It's really just adding bicep to the push workout. But I know I showed you a little whiteboard and I did adjust the workout slightly so I'm gonna walk you through it right now after warming up the bands I did a lot of shoulder warm-ups uh, I even warmed up my lats with the band uh, I moved on to the flat bench press which is my first movement of the day it's a compound movement I'm using 275 pounds for four sets of eight reps now I want you guys to watch this is my first set of eight and on my second set of eight really any set in general that I start with I want you to notice how slow I descend on the very first rep. I literally do, a, it's like a negative, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi on the way down, and then I explode up, and then I like to get my momentum. Now, you can kind of watch it on this next clip, but it's something that I always, always do, and to me, it helps me because I feel like if I can really control that first rep, be sure I'm nice and tight, I, I just feel locked in. I know that I'm in control of that weight. I know that the weight's not controlling me. It's not my ego lifting controlled and then you can see I pick up the pace after the first rep. So 275 for four sets of eight and that's all I had written down but I did one more, I did the fifth set with 225 for like 12 reps and so five total working sets on the flat bench and then I moved on to the second chest motion of the day. Now keep in mind guys, chest is one of my stronger body parts and so I'm not doing too too much volume on it. Uh, if it was a weaker body part, I'd be adding one to two more exercises. But uh, what I did was the incline hammer strength for about 10 to 12 reps. And I supersetted that. Yes, I supersetted it with a cable fly. Uh, here, I'm just really focused on keeping my back really tight and pausing at the bottom, getting a full range of motion. I feel like pausing at the bottom. A lot of people are, oh, my, my chest is lacking. My chest is lacking. It's not growing. And one of the first things I would say to start doing is doing pause reps. Be sure your form is nice and tight. Pause at the bottom, get a full stretch in your chest and hold it for a second. You may have to drop down your weight, whether you're doing like a bench or an incline dumbbell or just a dumbbell bench press, a flat dumbbell bench, whatever you're doing, even a fly. Pause at the bottom of the movement, feel the stretch and you will see your chest grow. All right, so uh, super set of that. I did four sets of that. And then I moved on to my shoulder movement of the day, which was a lateral raise. It's not side lateral because lateral means side. So it's lateral raise or side raise, I guess. No one ever says side raise, just say lateral raise. Lateral raise, uh, I'm focusing on almost pausing at the top, guys. Very nice and controlled. I'm not swaying too much. I'm focusing, <coughs> excuse me, on pulling up with my elbow, squeezing at the top, and literally holding at the top for a split second coming down. Uh, there, I did five sets of 10 to 12 with the 20 pound dumbbells, and I think I used 25s for a few sets. Um, and I did five sets because in, instead of doing like three or four sets and two movements, I chose to do five sets of that one movement, and I'll get some more sh sh shoulder volume later on this week. Uh, first bicep movement was a straight, you know, single exercise. I wasn't super setting, I wasn't drop setting. I was doing alternating dumbbell curls with 40 pounds, uh, focusing. You can see how I'm gripping the dumbbell higher up versus in the middle. I grip it higher up, I kind of choke up on the dumbbell and focus on twisting my pinky outwards. So I rotate, 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 twist it outwards and I get a full uh, contraction. I'm supinating my wrist as I'm coming up. Supinating, boom. That means going from pronated or down all the way up or neutral to a supinated position is twisting. So um, what did I do there? How many sets? I did four sets of eight to 10 reps. And then another, my second arm movement, which was a tricep push down, as you're seeing here, which was not supersetted, again, not drop setted. It was just a straight set of four working sets, 12 to 10 to 15 reps really, going heavy, feeling a stretch at the top. And then this is how I finish off my workout, or my at least the workout I did some abs. But I did a super set here of easy bar curl. This was, I think, 25 pounds, two tens and a five. 10 reps, 10 to 12 reps on a curl, super set with a French press with the same exact easy bar. So I didn't have to move. There's no rest time. Literally do your reps and then go on your tricep movement. So I did four workings or four total sets here. The first two sets, I started with a curl and then did the tricep. And on the second two sets, I started with the tricep, then did the curl. So that was the entire workout. I finished with some abs and just some leg raises uh, on the pull-up bar. And that was it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this commentary. Be sure to try it out. You know what, I'm gonna write the workout here uh, right after this ab clip. So if you wanna take a screenshot or a, yeah, whatever you wanna do, you can do that and try this workout out for yourself. Enjoy. This is Dean. How's it going? And this is Sam. What's up? They're coming from 
Manchester. England. Uh, Liverpool. Some Ireland, so. Liverpool, right? Yeah, Liverpool. Oh, you're from uh, Ireland? Yeah, yeah, Dublin. Well, Dublin. Mm -hmm. Dublin and Liverpool. So, Dean's got a YouTube channel. We're about uh -huh. to answer a few questions for him. And we're gonna sit down here, I'm drenched in sweat, <laughs> do a quick Q&A. So, first of all, what do you think was the main reason for you starting YouTube? Uh, main reason was I went to college and I was so passionate about working out because at the time I was constantly watching videos and reading things and, you know, in the gym two hours a day, which was my favorite part of the day. So uh, I was so into it and didn't really fit in too well at school. And so found you know, picking up a camera, kind of doing what my idols were doing at the time as a hobby. And that sort of transitioned into what it is now. Yeah, who did you follow? I followed Greg Plitt, I followed Matt Ogus, Chris Jones, for Zeke's Greatness. Um, just a bunch of old school guys, man. I did a lot of reading on some Like you were saying that uh, when you focused on YouTube, everything else came. Could you explain exactly. that a bit more? So, uh, a little bit earlier, Dean asked, you know, what was the primary source of everything, and uh, I think that focusing for me it was YouTube. For me, it was putting up content, consistent videos, putting effort there, and by putting a lot of effort into that and not worrying so much about, you know, not worrying so much about sponsorships and this and that and that and collabs, just focusing on your own channel and building up your name. Uh, if you can do that, everything else kind of falls into place. The opportunities come up, the sponsorships come up, the, the loyal supporters come up, and that, that all appears if you just focus and stay focused on what you're trying to do, which should be building whatever it is you're trying to build, mm -hmm. primary focus. Yeah, so did you have a lot of um, obstacles in the way, like people saying? Oh yeah, well my biggest, first off starting YouTube, I was kind of like a laughing, I was kind of like a laughing side of the dorm, you know? Yeah. Um, I was the only one doing it at my school at the time, and, you know, it was this guy recording this dorm room, you know, doing physique updates and stuff, and um, that was tough, starting was tough, there wasn't much support, but the hardest part for me was going, it was that transition from YouTube part-time to really committing to YouTube full-time. Uh, that required leaving school, that required going against my parents' wishes, that required going against my friends' advice, all of my friends' advice. Um, that was definitely the hardest part. So those were the main obstacles. Go out there, have faith, keep going, you'll get there one day. All right, well thanks Christian, right. I appreciate that so much. It, man. All right. I have to head home and shower. <laughs> yeah, I need to do the same thing. All right guys, right now uh, I am editing this video First off, I realized how crappy the footage looks for this whole video, so I'm really sorry. I think I fixed it, pretty sure. Um, so yeah, thank you for staying tuned if you're still watching. But I'm looking over the Q&A, and in the Q&A I said, uh, Dean was asking me, you know, what advice would you give to someone young? What advice would you give to someone who has a passion and really knows what they want to do, but you know they don't have support from their parents or from their friends, or you know they don't, they they can't jump into that full time, right? And Instead, I was actually, I'll show you right now. I was gonna type out like, I was writing some text on the screen of what I was gonna say over it, but I feel like it's just easier to talk to you during this clip and elaborate a little bit more. And so, say you are in school, right? We're gonna use my scenario. You're in school, you're, you're putting effort into your school, you're making good grades, you're making A's, you're making B's, you are passing your tests, you're going to class. And you have this passion for me, it was working out, it was lifting, it was creating the, these YouTube videos, right? And this content. And I was, at this point, I was doing emails, I was answering all, you know, I was, had clients, I'm communicating with them on a daily basis and balancing school, right? So I was still putting my effort here, I was still studying for my exams, going to my classes, but I was also putting my effort here, right? Like, just like this. And so this is, a, this is a primary focus, right? Now this kept coming up and coming up and coming up, you know, I was... I was making money and I was I was like, wow, this is, you know, my goal is to, I was, this whole time during school, I was a health and fitness manager major. I wanted to go into health and fitness and own a fitness company, something having to do with fitness and training and things like that. So I knew that was my passion, right? Now, I was like, wow, this, this is real. Like, this is here. This is an opportunity. It's presented itself. For me, it was, I'm making more money now than I would if I got this degree and got this job over here, but I'm still in school. You know, and these opportunities were here. Gymshark was contacting me, wanting me to work with them, fly out to the UK and do all of this stuff. And, you know, at this time, it's just like all this was so crazy and it was right in front of me. But my point is, I was still getting this effort over here. And until I knew for a fact that this passion, this hobby, this thing that I love to do so much could not only meet my responsibilities, it could, I could, I could fund myself. I don't need any, I don't need any help. I can do everything on my own. I can pay for my apartment. I can pay for my food. I can do, I can live my life with this. That 
when you know that for a fact, that is when you can pursue this passion full time. But until you get to that point, you are going to go through that transition phase where you are trying to balance your work that you may not enjoy. You have to balance these things as you have to put effort here. Don't slack here and just give everything your passion and don't think that you can go from doing nothing and just sitting there on the couch and be like, you know what? Screw that. That sounds too hard. I don't really like that. I'm just going to go for my passion and uh, I'm going to start out of nowhere. You have to be putting effort into here, put effort into here because the way you put effort, the, the, your work ethic is constant throughout everything. If you work hard in school, if you feel that pressure and anxiety, you, man, you have a test coming, I've got to do well, got to do well, got to do well, and you do well, that same work ethic transitions into everything. You can't be amazing over here and be the hardest worker in the gym for an hour a day, and then you know you, you hit all your sets, you hit all your reps, you don't cheat yourself, you, you really work on progressing, and then you treat everything else in your life, in your life like crap. You half-ass everything. You know, you... you you don't clean up after yourself. You throw some trash, you miss the trash, you leave it on the floor. That, those, that character remains constant throughout everything in your life. And that's definitely something, I'm not gonna lie, it's definitely something that is developed as you get older. You work on those things, you, you notice those things. And I'm going on a tangent now, but be sure that you can balance your work your responsibilities, your meeting responsibilities. A lot of you guys, a lot of you watching are very young. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, your responsibilities are down here compared to people that are a little bit older. Maybe you have kids, maybe you have a mortgage, you have bills to pay, you know, and I'm not saying you don't have responsibilities here. But if you're young, you're in a better position to pursue what you want because you have time. You have time to be doing this and be doing this, work on this, work on this, work on this, and you're going to lose some sleep. You have to put in major, major work to be able to grow whatever this passion is. It doesn't have to be fitness or YouTube or anything. It can be art. It can be photography. It can be you love event coordinating. You love it. whatever it is, man. You can do it. You can do it. And uh, don't let people tell you no. Don't let people hold you back. That's all I wanted to say. And with that said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one.